Okay, we talked about eukaryotes. We talk about prokaryotes. What about viruses? Now, viruses are not even considered to be in the tree of life. They, this is a non-cellular structure. It is not considered living. Why? I'll tell you soon. But let me talk about a few structures. It's 50 times smaller than bacteria. It's around only 20 to 300 nanometers. Now, if you convert that into micrometers, that would be a 0 0.02 to 0 0.3 micrometers. This is compared to a bacteria, which is 1 to 5 micrometers. That is a huge difference, right? So anyways, it is very much smaller. It's also much simpler. There's not even plasma membranes or plasms of or ribosomes. Only three things. You're like, phew, not so complicated. Thank God. All right, so only three things you need to remember. Number one, it has DNA or RNA at the nucleic acid core. So basically, DNA and RNA is in the center. Okay, or RNA. So they are RNA viruses and DNA viruses. So, you know, that depends on the type of virus. Number two is a capsid or protein coat around that nucleic acid core. Now, capsid is mainly a protective coat. Some viruses have one coat, some viruses have two coats. And number three, what you need to know is besides the nucleic acid core and the capsid, outside that they have an outer envelope. We call it the viral envelope and it's made of phospholipids. But this is not considered a cell surface membrane. This is not a cell surface membrane. This is a viral envelope. Why? Because this um, outer envelope is derived from the host. It is not from itself. It's from somewhere else. Now, some proteins may be present at this particular outer envelope. Okay, so it doesn't count as four, lah, actually. Right. Some proteins may be present at this outer envelope. For example, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. You don't need to remember this, but fun fact. When we talk about H1N1, that's what H and N stands for. It's actually a type of protein on the outer viral envelope. Anyways, now I haven't answered the question. Why are viruses considered non-cellular? Why are they considered, you know, not living? Well, it's because they're all parasitic. And they only reproduce, they can only reproduce, by infecting living cells. Now, how does it do this? Okay, first, virus binds to cell. Then, they incorporate their viral DNA or RNA into the cell. And then, they use this, right? They use the host stuff. Right, their host enzymes, their host organelles like ribosomes, ER, Golgi, the virus doesn't have it, but the host cells has it, right? So they use it in order to produce even more viruses. Without the host cells, the viruses will die. They will not be able to reproduce or they will go into, you know, um, they will just go and be stuck at a certain stage. Okay, so are they considered living then? Because it can only reproduce by, you know, feeding off others and, and infecting other cells. It doesn't really have its own organelles. It doesn't have its own metabolism. So yeah, like, like it's just using the whole cell. So are they considered living? It's still kind of debated, but in your syllabus, it's considered as non-cellular, okay? They're not considered living in um, your syllabus. So yeah, with that, we have covered all the eukaryotic st structures we need to, okay? We also have covered um, prokaryotes and viruses. So three main things we have learned here. Organelles, 
eukaryotes versus prokaryotes and viruses. So yeah, that's the end of chapter one. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.